Hello, everyone. I'm Zhang Xingjian from Tsinghua University. It is my pleasure to introduce our recent results on device independent security at QCrypt this year. And the title of my poster is Simple and Practical Device Independent Security Analysis. First, I would like to thank all my collaborators, including my colleagues Pei Zeng and Tian Ye, who are now postdoc fellow at the University of Chicago and PhD candidate at Carnegie Mellon, respectively, and Professor Hui Kuan Lo and my supervisor Xiong Feng Ma. Before we delve into the details, I would like to give a brief summary of our results. Taking DIQKD as an example, we provide a full fantasized security analysis against general attacks, and the key rate is asymptotically tied. In this poster, I would like to give a sketch of the um, a sketch of the analysis on a conceptual level and present what we believe to be the most important contributions. That is, we establish the complementarity approach for analyzing device independent tasks, which unifies them with their device dependent cousins. And from a practical perspective, our analysis gives a more efficient finite performance and significantly shortens the experimental time. As we all know, quantum non-quality is a most novel feature that distinguishes quantum theory from its classical alternative. As shown by Bell tests, we have known that our world is not ruled by the local hidden variables. And going one step further, uh, Bell inequality violation tells us many things. In brevity, we can self-test quantum behavior inside the devices without trusting them in prior. Such a device independent feature brings good news for cryptography like key distribution. For example, in the CHSH-based ICAT-91 protocol, users randomly apply bell tests to test the devices and key generation environments. So why do we like the IQKD? Experimentally, device independence provides us with a tool to bypass the endless device characterization. Well, theoretically, this is a cryptographic task that assumes almost only the correctness of quantum theory. Now the question is, how to prove the security of the IQKD? Um, a successful practice in common QKD analysis is the complementarity approach. And here, let us look at a typical QKD protocol. Legitimate users, which we call Alice and Bob, first share a quantum state that may be correlated with quantum set information, which we regard as if. Um, then Alice and Bob first measure their state and obtain raw keys kappa A and kappa B, and then they reconcile their keys to kappa B, making their key strings identical. Well, in the end, they perform privacy amplification to remove information leakage. In the complementarity-based analysis, we date back to the measurement step. Now, imagine that instead of taking the key generation measurements, Bob measures his state on the complementary basis, which we denote as X basis here. We can put QKD security into a guessing game. We ask how predictable is Bob's X basis measurement assisted by Alice's measurements. The more accurate Alice guesses this complementary measurement, the less information Eve gets about the key. We call this uncertainty, uncertainty in the complementary basis as the number of fixed error patterns or max entropy. This complementarity approach inherently adopts to the non-ID cases. Well, on the other hand, the existing analysis for DI tasks share a very different flavor from this common practice. In summary, these results directly examine the final state, which is a classical quantum state, and estimate its amount of mean entropy. These works obtain various entropy accumulation results, and some of them have a red uh, asymptotically tight key rate, like the EAT work. Yet we want to see, is there a possibility to return to the tradition? So here comes to our work. First, let's have a look at the protocol we use. We apply the modified ICAS protocol and the security assumptions are essentially the same as those for a bell test. In particular, we trust the randomness for in settings and pose a non-signaling condition between the users in quantum environments. A special requirement for implementation is a sequential setting where the users perform measurements round by round, such that the correlation only comes, only comes from the past. This shall play a vital role in our analysis. The roadmap for our analysis is as follows. As building a model from Lego bricks, we reduce this problem to simpler ones. 
will effectively reduce the unknown high-dimensional space to qubits, study the single round of probabilities, and then move on to the frequency in multiple rounds. Well, before all this, we should specify uh, what quantum state we perform the analysis. Usually, we model the sequential setting as channel concatenation like the left figure. Well, to apply the complementarity approach, we need to transform it to a circuit on the right, where conditioned on the random inputs, an uh, equivalent state preparation operates on the state such that the measurements become separable operators on subsystems for each round. Well, the trick here is to use Stanspring dilation, delayed measurements, and quantum teleportation. We can prove that for any sequential setting on the left, we can find an equivalent picture to describe the process as the circuit on the right. Therefore, we can virtually replace key generation measurements with their complementary basis and proceed to the complementarity of analysis. Afterwards, we take the complementarity approach, and here is a sketch for the analysis and all the important intermediate results. In the end, the key privacy formula is okay. Um, in the end, the key privacy formula is something like this, which converges to the central term with large data sizes and gives an asymptotically tight performance. On the experimental side, we find our results particularly efficient in the finite size regime. We take some numerical simulation results. In the practical regimes achievable by NV center and atomic platforms compared to the original E80 methods, our method, <coughs> our results cut down the uh, least number of rounds for positive key generation by several orders, as can be shown by this figure. And our method is even advantageous to improve E80 methods that use second order techniques. By re-examining the data from the recent DIQD experiment, we find that the experimental time span can actually be shortened by 70%. In addition to the above conceptual and numerical intro, there are many interesting techniques and extensions developed during this project, and I consider that beyond our original intention of unifying QKD security analysis around the complementarity approach, these results may also give us a new insight into the entropic methods. For instance, one may expect a new quantum typicality argument inspired by the Martin analysis. And I hope our results can inspire more discussions, new techniques, and deeper understanding of the nanocality and quantum communication. Thank you very much.